Welcome to the Real People, Real Stories podcast, brought to you by the Pasiello Group, bringing you the interesting and diverse stories of individuals working to make the world a more inclusive place. Hey, welcome to the Real People, Real Stories podcast, brought to you by the Pasiello Group and its affiliate Interactive Accessibility. I am your host, Mark Miller, thanking you for helping us keep it accessible. Do us a favor, if you're enjoying the IAP, share it. Tell someone about it. Hey, even link to it from your accessible website. Um, thanks everyone for joining us today. Uh, we have um, a whole crew with us today and I wanna first introduce um, Shirley to everyone. She is from the South Fork Bakery. So Shirley, can you tell us a little bit about this bakery and, um, and what it does and, and more importantly, I guess, um, who works there? Okay, um, South Park Bakery started five years ago and um, I started it. I am a speech and language pathologist and I um, wanted to create opportunities for work for special needs adults. Uh, as a speech therapist, I worked with families and adults uh, who graduated at 21 years of age from high school and they didn't have any opportunities for work really out here, any meaningful work that I, I felt. Um, so I started a wholesale bakery um, in 2016, and for two, three years, we were a, non, a regular profit business, and then we applied for our nonprofit status in our third year and got it at the end of that year in 2018. So for the past two years, we've had a board of directors, and we have been a nonprofit, and we have about 16 uh, special needs adults who work on our staff. Um, and we're the only business on the East End of Long Island um, that specifically hires um, people with special needs. So that, that's that's in a nutshell. <laughs> that's, that's absolutely fantastic. And, and I have to say, first of all, I can really appreciate just your, your you know, original profession as a speech therapist because my, um, I have an aunt who's a speech therapist. So I grew up with a speech therapist um, mm -hmm. when we were um, doing something wrong and she wanted to pay attention to us. She would say, look at my mouth, <laughs> like that, look at my mouth. Um, but it was, it was very interesting and in, in actually, um, uh, you know, as a young man growing up with a speech therapist and being exposed to a lot of the, the things that you're talking about, it's probably a lot where my passion for this industry really came in. Um, I'm, um, I'm a re reasonable at sign language and that was definitely something, an interest that was sparked uh, out of speech therapy. What's interesting to me is that you have this career and you're working with, um, you know, people with special needs, and then you decide, I, I'm assuming sort of in a retirement um, capacity, right? Like I'm no longer going to do the speech therapy thing. I'm going to open up a bakery. <laughs> well, I haven't, <laughs> given, I haven't given up my speech therapy practice. Okay. You're still doing that. Okay. You're still doing that. But where do you, why a bakery and, and where does this idea like really evolve from and, 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 and you know, in this sort of specific way it formed for you? Well, I, I've had a kitchenette in my private practice office for years and I've mm -hmm. used cooking and baking therapeutically. So I, it's great for following it directions. It's great for cooperating and it's oh, great for you know, communication, talking back and forth and working through. So I, I, so when I was so it's a part of your that, curriculum for a long time, really. Yes, it has been. I mean, it's, it's just something that they, it's very motivating. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's always been something that's been fun to do both for me and my, my clients. Um, and it has a lot of value uh, for a lot of different reasons, as I just mentioned. So when I thought about uh, the clients that I was working with that who were graduating and didn't have opportunities for work. I thought, well, they all love to bake with me. Maybe a bakery would be a good thing. Uh, it was sort of, and I did, I, I did do some, some background. I went to see some other um, companies that are, um, that are bakeries that hire special needs adults that maybe mm -hmm. are more integrated than we are, that mm -hmm. hire um, both special needs and um, tip, more typical um, adults. But uh, I decided to go with this model. Um, but I knew there were other businesses out there that were either colleagues like myself or parents were starting companies that were employing adults with disabilities, giving them something meaningful, purposeful to do. And I just felt a great need to sort of take that, my expertise and move it into that employment sector. 
I, I have to say, um, I actually used to um, have a, a radio talk show for many years, and we we talked to local businesses, small business, and we talked a lot about starting businesses. And and I think you know, you can add to your skill set like a really smart businesswoman because doing that due diligence ahead of time probably is is uh, led to your success. It's a really it's really good to recognize that there's an existing template and not reinvent the wheel and not go through the same learning pains as, as you would otherwise and say, geez, what did these people do? What's working for them? And so I think that that's, that's, that's very smart. So talk to me about like the first days, right? I can imagine this wonderful concept and, and you're just pumped and you've done this due diligence and this research and you've got this great idea, everything's motivated, but then you have the reality in the first few weeks, the first few months, the first few years of running a business and managing a group of people. So what was that like? Like what were, you know, were there particular challenges or things that occurred that really um, surprised you in that, in that, uh, in those early days? Um, you know, I, I've always loved to bake, but commercial baking is quite another story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was a big learning curve, you know, the first time walking into restaurant depot and, coming out with this huge cart and my little Toyota Prius, the whole back of it was full <laughs> of butter and flour, you know, so that whole element of, of moving and trucking things around that are 50 pounds was sort of mm -hmm. like, wow, this is not just, you know, thinking things out. It's a lot of manual labor. I think for right. me, that was a big thing, but I, the easiest part was really um, the employees. I, I, I always work with that population. I'm comfortable with them. I felt like I could set things up for success for them mm -hmm. and felt confident doing that. It's the other, the whole other parts of the business, you know, that, you know, the ordering, the inventory, mm -hmm. you know, I did hire a baker. So I had somebody there for quality control and, you know, to help with that, the production end of it. Um, and uh, the first year, first year. And so she's been with us um, all five years. Oh, wonderful. So, well, and that kind of makes sense because that's where your, your strength was in yeah. sort of the management of those employees. So speaking of employees, we have two other people I want to introduce yeah. on the podcast, Sarah and Scott. And I'm assuming that you're, um, that you work uh, with or work for Shirley in the bakery. So let's start with Sarah. Sarah, can you talk to us a little bit about what you do in the bakery and, and, um, and, and, you know, how this job is for you? We're actually back to what Shirley was saying about like the first couple of weeks of the bakery. I started with a bakery five years ago. And I remember us being at like the Hayground Kitchen and I'm surely having to say, because I drive and I have a car. So Shirley's like, can you go get some butter from King Cullen and come back? So we like ran out of stuff. And I was like, sure. So, um, so, so the reason she was successful is because you were there in the wings waiting to, <laughs> to like, fix drive the, the car over there and go to King Cullen and get the, um, I, I got yeah. it. So, um, so what do you do? Started, what do you do for the bakery? So I do the labels. So I do about 900 to 1,000 labels each week, which means mm -hmm. I put labels on the bags. Um, and then I do the Southampton deliveries. So I deliver to about, we have about 13 stores. Wow. But also marketing. So I like market them and I'm on their um, marketing committee. I also do the um, Southampton Farmer's Market, which runs on Sundays. It started in um, Memorial Day weekend. And it actually ran through like, Thanksgiving this year usually ends Columbus Day. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually spent the day with Scott. So I do the, Scott does the early shift and I do the 12 to 3.30 shift. Um, so then he comes back at three o'clock. We both take down everything. Um, and then I do the, I do phone calls on Monday. So on Mondays I call my clients and say, hey, it's Sarah from Southwood Bakery. Would you like to order something for this week? And they say, sure, I'll order Blondie's. And I say, oh, we, we have a new um, we have a new product like macaroons. Would you like to try those for the week? Right. Yeah. Um, so. Wow. So that so um, you I mean you have a that's a ton of responsibility. Right? Yeah, it sounds like you run the bakery. <laughs> Surely, what do you do? And I have another job too, so this is not my own well, job. She's been with me five years. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like you, you can tell, right? She's yeah. got the the lay of the land. So you said you have another job too, Sarah. And also, I got us on News Twelve Long Island. I don't know if you guys saw that. We were on News Twelve. Long oh Island really? With Doug Gee, like East End Show, and I was able to get them on that. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, that's a true marketer right there that's able to yeah, do Yeah, I could learn from you. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's what you know. That's what Marissa, my producer, does. She's really? Mar- she's yeah. marketing. Yep. So yeah, maybe you guys like, should share some trade secrets, right? Yes. <laughs> I've done some like patch articles too. Um, yeah. Different like, articles. So I also this is not my only job. I yeah. have a second job. I work for the Southampton Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Um, and I've been doing that. And actually, I got it. I got a um, intern job there. Actually, it was for first commute. No, it was for um, confirmation in eighth grade oh, back wow. in the day. Mm-hmm. And then, like four or five years later, they said, "Let me hire you." So I do that ten hours a week, and I do this ten hours a week. Um, that's so. Wonderful. That's great. So I really Scott, love the bakery stuff. So. Yeah, that's good. So Scott, can you tell us a little bit about what you do for the bakery? It sounds like you do some some similar things to Sarah. Yeah, uh, I'm actually more of the hands-on at the bakery, but I, um, I, my responsibilities include uh, picking up one of the employees, uh, being there on time. Um, also, I uh, get the, uh, I bring up the set of um, things that need to be brought up. Um, I also uh, bake and mix the dough uh, three days a week. Um, I do delivering of our baked goods Mm -hmm. um, to local stores uh, on our account. Um, I also sell, like Sarah said, I sell uh, the baked goods at uh, the farmer's market in Southampton. So I uh, the local farmer's market and I do that once a week and I do it all over again and I enjoy doing it. Good. That's wonderful. What's your, Scott, what is your, like, you've just got so many responsibilities and I'll probably ask you the same thing here in a minute too, Sarah, but what's your favorite thing? Like when you think about the week that you have ahead of you, Scott, what's the one thing you look the most forward to doing? I think, uh, Sunday after after working uh, uh, the week from Monday to Wednesday, uh, going to the farmers market on Sunday, and I thought you were going to say that <laughs> feeling a sense of relief that I finished the day and then doing it all over again. Yeah, uh, that's so do you I- meet a lot of do you meet a lot of new people at the farmers market? Like, is that social social aspect a lot of fun for you? Yeah, I, I meet a lot of the same people over again. They're regulars. They mm-hmm. like that we're a local bakery and they give me great. Um, they couldn't be nicer. Yeah, that's that's great. So it's almost like you've developed friends um, through that, you know, th- through selling the cookies or through the uh, baked goods at. Um, yes, I do. Yeah. Too. That that's wonderful. So, how about you, Sarah? Do you have like um, out of all the all the responsibilities, running the whole company that you do? Yeah. Is there is there um, is there something that like is is uh, you look forward to the most? Well, I love doing the um, I love getting us into like different mm. news quill and things like that. I love doing that. Um, that's not really part of the job, but I love doing that. So, um, sure. And the farmers market's great because actually, um, the Southampton Chamber of Commerce, where I work, they run the farmers market. Um, oh. So, um, but I love seeing the people at the farmers market. I like the vendors are really great. I know a lot of the vendors. I tell them I work for the chamber. Um, and I'm actually, I'm at the chamber on Saturdays. So mm-hmm. the farmers market is on Sundays. So um, I love like seeing the different vendors, like having the food, um, being in Agawam Park because it's. Um, by the ocean so there's oh, a huge right. park by the ocean um so that's just seeing great. new clients and customers and yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean it sounds like that that um you know you're a very valuable employee too because you are thinking outside of just your basic responsibilities and you're thinking about different ways in which you can help the company right and and, and improve and get them into further places so to me and I, and I think that Marissa would agree, like that's what we look for in employees is people who are really thinking overall about the company. And, it, and is it fair to say that both of you guys really love this company? Like you're very passionate yeah. about it and you wanna see it succeed? Yeah. Yeah. That so I have to ask, what type of uh, products do you sell? What are your oh, favorites? That's a good question. Marissa getting down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> yeah, hello. I'm this thinking you, you heard about that. Blondies, maybe some tarts, <laughs> brownies, cookies. What are you guys selling? You haven't had dinner yet, have you, have you Marissa? <laughs> it's 4.30, Mark. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Scott. You mix up some of the weather. Tell them what you... you I, well, I, I 
on the on Monday I mix the chocolate chip cookies. I mm -hmm. usually start out with baking the chocolate chunky brownies. Oh, nice! Because it it's once we bake them, it's they're 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 baked and we don't have to redo the uh, the the chocolate chip cookies get rolled on a different day. Okay. So I get to, so I get to make the chocolate chunky brownies, and I uh, also uh, will make the chocolate chip cookie dough. Mm. which will be over uh, refrigerated overnight and uh, rolled the next day uh, when, when I usually make the coconut macaroons. Ooh. Uh, chocolate almond macaroons. That sounds great. So I, I have to say that I love chocolate chip cookies. I don't know if that makes me a simple person when it comes to <laughs> baked goods. You are a simple like, person. I, yeah, you can do the you know, butter and layers and all that kind of stuff. Give me a good chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. Are your chocolate chip cookies really good, Scott? I, to be honest with you, I've never had one before. What? Yeah, need the chocolate chip? How do you? Why have you? So this is what we. This is what the podcast is now about. We have to explore <laughs> yeah. why Scott has never eaten a chocolate chip cookie. How come you haven't had one? You've you have incredible one. willpower. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I. I, I know they're delicious. I just, <laughs> I, I'm not really that much of a, uh, a sweets guy, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I like the, I like the, I like that they are made with very good ingredients and I like that Great. they end That's, up. You're the perfect guy to make them though, because I think yeah. anybody else would be tempted to just eat them all. So. Yeah. I get, I get, I, this is starting to make sense, Shirley. I get the arrangement here. So, so Sarah, have you tried, have you They're tried? Wheat free. What's that? They're wheat free. They're wheat free. And gluten friendly. And gluten friendly. Nice. So have you, have you eaten them, Sarah? Yeah. And I'm actually diabetic. So of course I want to be eating all that stuff too. Oh no. But you have to control how much you eat. What? So, is, is, so you have to, you can't eat too much. You have to control how much. You I mean, eat. you have to control it. So I'm a diabetic and actually. My parents own a candy store in Southampton, so. Oh man, yeah. you must have a big willpower. So, yeah. yeah, you better come with some willpower. Or you're in big trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what's your favorite? What's your favorite thing, Sarah? That um, the that I guess that Scott makes. What's that? I love the ginger. Well, we have other cookies also. Oh, you We do? have ginger snaps. Mm. Oatmeal raisin. Love ginger yeah. snaps. We have biscotti sometimes. Um, pumpkin blondies, <gasps> chocolate chunkies, oatmeal raisin cookies. Yeah. Um, I love the ginger snaps. I love, I like to, so here's my big question. How long would it take you to gather up a bunch of that stuff and get it up to New Hampshire from New York? Yeah. <laughs> like, can you do that in about 20 minutes? <laughs> That's it. I'm, I'm a huge ginger snap fan. And I will tell you what, you can buy those ginger snaps the, at the, um, at the grocery store, but there is nothing like a good, I'll call it homemade ginger okay. snap. It's just something else. And I never ate them before I started working at the bakery. So I mean, there you go. Yeah, and all there the kid, kids want them too, which is really interesting. Yeah, let's go for the ginger snaps. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So, so Shirley, can tell us a little bit about um, just you know, you 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 do you do have a, a kind of a unique workforce here, right? Um, and, uh, and obviously a really good workforce. Um, what's it like managing that workforce and where do you find, like, I'm interested in where there's, there's sort of strengths that we might not realize or advantages that we might not realize from, um, the, the group of adults that you do hire. Well, I, I think that, you know, they're very, uh, consistent and dependable. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I mean, as you see, I have people who have been with me for a long time, like Sarah. And, um, you know, Scott is always on time uh, every, and, and he sets things up, as he said, at the beginning of, this, of the shifts. Um, so that, that dependability factor is, mm -hmm. is, is really big and the reliability. Um, and I also think that, you know, many people I think are fearful uh, that their challenges will get in the way of being productive. And I think that, that with a little education about how to accommodate or how to adjust things, even slightly, like we have stools in the kitchen. Um, we have a huge counter area. It's a very big, so maybe six or eight people could be around it. But standing can be problematic for some of the adults. So we have stools that they can lean back on. 
-hmm. which is not typical in a regular kitchen and maybe mm -hmm. wouldn't be allowed in, in most kitchens. But you know, we make accommodations as, as necessary. Um, but I think that um, you know, they're also very persistent. You know, mm -hmm. they, many of them have dealt with many challenges throughout their lives. And, and as a result, I think are stronger for it. Um, you know, I think that maybe uh, the tendency may be to think that they would give up and whatever, but with the right supports, they don't. They want to succeed so badly. They want to, to do a good job. Um, they're very motivated in that way. Now, and um, I, from my experience in the, in the employees that I have. Um, I think that that's, that's a really good point about sort of if you accommodate properly, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you can, you, you can get great work and, you know, that's, that's true across the board. And we attend this conference every year called CSUN. And one of the great um, talks that's done at CSUN is Marissa, tell me if you remember, I think it's, is it Jared in the, in the lion? Is that his first name? You may not, but there's it's this individual who works for the uh, BBC, the British Broadcasting Company. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Um, he's on the autistic spectrum, and he's in a really interesting spot on the spectrum where he's he's very self-aware. So he has this unique ability to really explain his experiences. Mm -hmm. And one of the most brilliant concepts that have 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 come out of this individual is is he says don't disable me with your environment, mm -hmm. right? And that's a way of saying, if you set me up in the proper environment, and this doesn't, this isn't just for, for people who are autistic, but right. people who have all sorts of different disabilities. We deal with a lot of people who are blind and it's mm -hmm. the same thing, right? If you set up the proper environment, um, the, you know, they could be just as effective as, as the next person or in, in, in many cases more effective. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't, say that jokingly, I say that seriously, because yeah, sure. our, some of our managers are blind, you know, and when I tell people who are not familiar with this type of industry, they go, what? You know, so I think it's a very good point and a very interesting point that you bring up about it. Sometimes it's just about creating that proper environment um, that enables people to succeed, right. you know? So, Shirley, can you tell me how um, you acquire your employees? Do you have like a pipeline or like, how do people apply to work for you? Um, at, the, at the beginning, it was really mainly my, my previous clients yeah. or people that I knew in, you know, from the schools because I work in the school setting as well as a speech therapist. And, um, but then people have just heard about me and I haven't had to advertise for people. I have a waiting list. I bet. I oh, that's really, they hear that, that something like this exists and the parents call me you know, from way far up the island, hours away and want yeah. to work here, but you know, that's just too far. You know, our, our, our goal or hope is in the future that we will be able to recreate this somewhere farther down the island so that we can accommodate more people. It's yeah. very much a community-based um, business. Uh, you know, uh, I being working here for so many years, I, I knew a lot of people in the community and particularly in the special needs community, but the retail stores are all very, you know, accommodating, want to give it a try. And, you know, some places it just doesn't work, other places, you know, they're just like pushing it out the door because yeah. they know what we're doing. So we would love to recreate that in other communities um, on Long Island. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. So Sarah and Scott, I have a question for you and, and we'll, we'll start with Sarah and, and have you answer. And then Scott, you can answer after Sarah does. But can you talk to me about what this job means to you? You know, um, if you think about maybe before you got this job or if you if, if, you know, Shirley didn't decide to start a bakery and you didn't have this opportunity, you know, what does it mean for you that you do have the opportunity, that there is this job for you? Go ahead, Sarah, you can start. Well, can we go back to like accommodations? Like um, sure. Scott and I are very high functioning, but there is other adults with disabilities that are lower functioning that can only maybe chop chocolate or something. So yep. there is other, we want to kind of be aware that there is other adults with disabilities at the bakery that are less functional than us. Um, they might need support staff who need helpers and things like that. So, of course, um, yeah. So, just to kind of be aware of it. Um, yeah, that's a good point. It's so, a very good point. Thank you. So, what the bakeries mean to me is self confidence. Um, I made friendships with people. Um, feels great to be at the bakery. Other jobs I've had, there's no support in the job. Like, if I need to ask Shirley a question, I can only ask her. She can kind of go over and guide me to show me how to do something. Um, so, it's really a nice feeling. So, yeah. If I need to sit down, I can sit down. So, 
So, I mean. And, and Scott, what is, what is having this job at the bakery mean to you? Well, I think uh, it's, it's been, um, it's set up a huge lifestyle for me of um, friendships I've made and it's taught me how to be organized as well as um, how to be, get along with people in friendships and people in the community. And um, more importantly, the confidence that Shirley has uh, given me in cooking and um, it's given me a purpose and uh, my um, my purpose has been um, really, I've been really lucky to know uh, with confidence uh, a, a new, um, a, um, a new, um, a, uh, a program that I am on the board of, which I, um, I'm proud to say that it's um, a mental health program that teaches about uh, uh, that teaches about the the uh, about uh, ex, um, about um, learning about mental health and um, the uh, the skills that need are that are needed for dealing with it. Uh, we put on programs of movies and we do uh, nutrition programs and stuff. And I'm, we, in these meetings, we hold um, a great number. We, we talk and we uh, come up with a, we, we revolve around different topics and it's, it's a great thing that I've been, I feel like I've been able to do because I've, had great confidence from working at this bakery. That's amazing. That's, that's yeah. fantastic. And, and I'll tell you what, and, and Marissa, please chime in here too if you want, but if you guys had to ask me that question, I would answer it the same way. My job gives me confidence. It gives me purpose. It, um, I mean, Marissa and I are, are, we work together, but we're also friends. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people that I consider to be very good friends are people that I work with. And I just think it's, I think that, you know, those were wonderful answers. And I think those are what we all get out of work. And I think it's very yeah. important that we all have the opportunity to get those things. You know, it's, it's, it's really about so much. And I don't know, Marissa, if you would answer the questions the same way or not, but uh, that's, that's how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel similarly. And I would like to say kudos to you, Shirley, for making an environment that mm. enables your employees to feel this way. I mean, that's really important. And yeah. it's a testament that so many of your employees have been there for so long that you've been able to create something amazing. Yeah. Well, and I know that it's real and I know the connections that are being made are real because, you know, Sarah, it was so important for you to point out the other individuals that, you know, you, you were saying that they're individuals that were lower functioning, but that they're yeah. just as important and you recognize how important yeah. they are. And it's important to you that we understand that. So, so that whole community of, of, of friends that you have is very important to you guys. And it's really, it's just wonderful to see. And I would echo the same thing Marissa just said, Shirley, it's fantastic that you came up with this. I, you know, I hope that what you're creating here is a template. Yeah, well, that's the idea. You know? I think that the, the last two years, we, we did a lot of board building in the last two years. And now I think we have a very effective board. We have 11 members mm -hmm. on the board. And um, I think they're gonna really help the bakery grow and develop. I mean, I'm really yes, excited I about that. And um, you know, in the future, there is that element of wanting to replicate and make a template. But I think that the, the first big goal is, you know, you can see how functioning these guys are who are on the call today. It, you know, they could work other places and Sarah does and, and Scott's taking on responsibility sure. in other places, but we really want to develop the training part of the program so that mm -hmm. we can create some community awareness about employing these guys and recognizing their abilities. Mm -hmm. so that they can get more exposure out in the community and uh, the community can be more aware of what their abilities are. Yeah. The wonderful. other thing is I work by myself at the Southampton Chamber of Commerce, so I have no coworkers. So I'm in the office by myself. So uh -huh. it's nice to kind of like see people. And if I go out to the bakery like once a month and help bake, or I do the farmer's work and I can actually see people, but right. at the, the Southampton Chamber, I'm by myself. And I'm the only one there, so. 
So the bakery gives you really more of that social opportunity. Yeah, I love you. Yeah. Other people, you know. And a, a um, boss that I can like, that's there. Mm -hmm. I'm there by myself, so. That's great. And my boss is not even there, so. So what you know at the beginning of the at the show of the show, Shirley, you you really mentioned you know you talked about how you started the bakery and you talked about the due diligence that you did and the people that you called that ran bakeries and all these, these, these resources that you leverage to learn how to do this. My vision now is that the future for you is answering those type of calls. When, you know, the, the news stories, this podcast, stuff like that gets out there that you're the one answering the phone and saying, this is how we did it. And this is, you know, this is my advice for you. And that there's other people out there that are trying to replicate, um, the success that you and your your employees have had. I think that's wonderful. Um, we need to wrap up the show, but I wanna see if there's anything that anybody wants to add before we do that, uh, that they think is important that we haven't talked about yet. So I've actually known Shirley since I was two years old. Um, really? My pathologist. Wow. When I was two years old coming to my house. Um, that's amazing. And we just so reconnected, so. So, and so she worked on speech with you? When I was two, yeah, at my house. Mm -hmm. So, I have a couple of employees that are that are like that. Oh, wow. Great. I just wanted to add one more thing, and then I think that I know you're all about accessibility. And so I think that at the bakery, um, we do try to, you know, the environment is one thing, like setting up the environment for six mm -hmm. months, but I also, you know, providing tools or supports, whatever that might be in the environment. But it's also the um, accommodations that are just about taking breaks and yeah. scheduling right. so that they only work the number of hours per week that they feel comfortable and maybe pushing them as they, you know, as I have with Scott when he first started, it was just for a couple hours. And now Scott can work up to six hours for me sometimes. So, wow. um, you know, but I think that it, it is being aware of, of, of who they are and what, where they are, and then being able to meet them there and then go forward from there so wonderful point well thank you all so much for sharing with us um i really appreciate it i mean you know you weren't just sharing about um the the business and your job it's, itself but you're sharing some personal things and in, in the ways that it affects you and i really um, appreciate your willingness to come on and share that with us because i think it's going to have an impact on people i mean this is this is important stuff and um it's important that people see your success and it makes, I mean, Scott and Sarah and, and Shirley, the three of you guys, whether you realize it or not, are leaders, right? You're role models. People can look up to you and say, wow, we can, we can, we can have that kind of success too, you know, and you're showing, you're paving the way and you're showing them how to do it. So I really appreciate you guys coming on and doing that and sharing um, that with us. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you guys. So this is Mark Miller thanking Shirley and Sarah and Scott and Marissa and reminding you all to keep it accessible. This podcast has been brought to you by the Pasiello Group, the experts in digital accessibility. Stay tuned for more Real People, Real Stories podcasts coming soon.